Hey guys, I'm going to start working on this 4.6. Today I'm just, um, this, it's actually this afternoon, I'm eating a piece of cheese. Um, I'm just going to pull this valve cover off, just to look inside, see how our, um, how those chains are, if they're loose or not, figure out what's wrong with this car. Um, I'm a little hungry, just eat, eating a cheese stick. Um, because I want to make sure it's the uh, tensioners before I start ordering parts for it. So I've got it backed into the garage. So I'll leave it here. It's not in the way here. And I'm just... I think they're all 8mm bolts. Bolts and nuts. I'll just whip that valve cover off and have a look inside. So. I'll put you on the stand and come back. Right now I'm just taking all the, the wiring and the clips off. Some of these are broken. I just want to get to these bolts. Two back ones are a pain in the ass. Alright. <sighs> Eight millimeter, not ten, John. Damn, they're all tight. Oh. It's hard to see back here. Sea dryers right in my way. Need another extension. Just got a universal joint and put a bit of tape around it because this one's really loose it flops around in case I need it
So now, get the two back ones out. There's one there. Let's see that one. So that's the last one there. Just that awkward one on the bottom. I've never done one of these before. So I'm learning as you guys are watching as well. So somehow I'm gonna to get to that one there. What I'm dealing with is there's, there's one way down the back here right next to this insulating pad, the heater box. sure if it's a, I can't see either, if it's a bolt or a stud with one of these, one of these on, no it's just a bolt so I can get a short 10. It's sweating like anything, it's, it's hot again today, it's about 100 degrees, mid-October. I uh, had to dig up another 8 millimeter. The other one was screwed up on the cap on the end. I need a magnet.
Hey. Huh? Filming? Yeah. That's all right. <sighs> I had to go inside. Wife came home and dinner time. Screw my little flashlight. So I just want to look down inside this um, valve cover. Let's see if I can Let's see if I can see anything. But I really want to pull it out, but they say you don't have to. You say you can just kind of move it out of the way just to get that timing, the timing cover off. But so what I've been I've been watching a few videos on repairing these oh, hoods aluminum shit. Um, there's nothing what they say is uh, you take the, the valve cover off and if you can grab the chain and do this that means it's gone because it should be tight but I just wanted to see how bad the damage is because this car's got absolutely no oil pressure so I want to see if I can see the tensioner if the tensioner has popped but I can't see it so I'm going to keep pulling it apart so just pulling the serpentine belt off start stripping the front down It's in, actually it's, it's in good shape, no cracks at all, that's still good, I thought it would be all dried out, but it's not, because there is a, um, I noticed when I got the car, I must have put a belt on it because there's a brand new tensioner on there, you see that. So I've got to figure out, got to take that power steering reservoir off, the brackets there. I know I've been watching the videos, the power steering pump's a bit of a pain. And I've got to get the puller and pull the um, harmonic balancer off, the crank pulley. And I believe I've got to take that off too for the water pump, just the just the pulley, not the pump. Okay, guys, I'm under the car. I just want to show you what I'm doing. So there is the oil filter. There's the oil filter, oil pressure sender, and there is the power steering pump, and the 10 millimeter bolts, and there's one stuck behind this this line here. You can see my finger, and you can't get it out. So you got to do that one last, and then while you're undoing it slowly, pull the power steering pump out while you're undoing it, so you can get that. Otherwise, you've got to disconnect this line. I don't, I don't want to have to puke power steering fluid everywhere. So that's what I'm doing. So there's, there's supposed to be two more up top and two down here. I've got the four bolts, the three other bolts out. There's one. Damn, this light doesn't quite shine on there. There's one there, it's half shadowed, sorry. I, I've got nowhere else to put the light. And there's two up top. I've got them. 
and there's one here and the easiest way to do it is just put the 10 millimeter wrench through the wheel and get it there and you see what you guys see what I mean is a 10 millimeter it's a um, gear drive but that tubes right in the way and I don't want to disconnect most guys don't disconnect it so once it's loose the the, um, the pump will actually work out walk out with it so you're not you're not going to get your wrench stuck either that's not going to happen just undoing that 10 millimeter and you get the, the pumps see the pumps loose and <laughs> So I got the pump loose, it's just laying there. Just pulled it out of the way so I can get to the bolts on that timing cover. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. I see what guys complain about. That one bolt's freaking annoying. So what I'm doing now is I just want to take a photo of all these bolts because they're all different. Some have got double uh, I'll show you what I mean. Some are just studs and some have these on it so if I take a photo I remember where they all went. So that's what I'm doing right now, just taking a few photos so I remember the orientation. Now, there's a timing mark right here, this little arrow, and it should be a notch in this crank, crank pulley. Sorry if I'm shaking, I've got, here it is, right there. It's right there. Okay, that's that. That's top dead center. I have to use the big boy. So I've got the puller on there, a little uh, trick, I didn't have any uh, 10, I mean metric bolts, these are the bolts out of the power steering pump, so it works out good, because I don't have any metric bolts lying around, so you just work this pulley off, I just got to make sure and return it back to uh, top dead center, but that's how it's that's how it's done. Well, I didn't get it on film, but I got the front cover off. Get some light on the subject. So, um, as you can see, this chain is completely loose. It's actually even rubbing on one of the bolts, on one of the pins. Been rattling on there, and this one has worn right through into the metal. 
you can actually see a piece of the chain sticking through there, uh, right there. so it's completely wore out so that definitely is the problem with this car and the cups have popped out they're right out so they should they shouldn't be that far out so it's just pumping oil out of there and my light's about to die and it's 11 at night and I've had enough for tonight I'm gonna to get online and order the kit for us okay it's the next day guys I'm gonna um, take all this stuff off take all the chains and guides and everything off I've ordered a kit it'll be here tomorrow I overnighted it but uh, I just gotta set the timing um, so the cams and everything are set I just gotta pull those valve covers up a little bit more so I can see the timing marks so tomorrow when the kit's here I can um, reset it so, so for, uh, I'm just going to pull those tensioners out there's a left and a right it's written on there and you got to remember if you're doing these left is on this side the engine because they always everything on a vehicle is if you're standing at the back of the vehicle looking forward so this is the left hand side and that's the right hand side and it's clearly written on them you see the big R and over here is the L so I'm going to take them off take all the guides off those chains are completely stretched out look at this so I don't see any material on you know big chunks of anything in the bottom of the pan but I think I will drain the pan, drain the oil out, tip some um, bit of diesel mix or something and just try and flush everything down through the dr drain pan, through the drain hole in the pan, just if there's anything laying there it'll, it'll flush it through. But yeah, this side's the worst, it's really, it's completely worn right through here. The plastic guide's completely gone. And this side is still now this side's completely wore through too it's completely worn right through I can see the day I can see daylight through there now yep it's completely gone tensioner out so the chain can drop down uh, with my sciatic guys I'm seeing a doctor on Thursday I've got an appointment some painkillers about an, an hour ago and they're kicking in I'm, I'm still hurting a little bit but I can deal with it puking oil out
loose, but the edges are sharp. Oh, look at that, it's completely worn right through. It's taken the top right off that tensioner. I don't know if you guys can see that. See, it's worn it right off. It's cut right through. Is the other one the same? Yep, here's the other one. Cut right through it. That should be flat. Wow. See, plastic's completely gone. Bit of metal there. <laughs> Little sliver, that's what I'm talking about. This shit could drop in the pan and the plastic, but all the plastic's still there. So that's good. This one is completely gone. It's like a slither of plastic still there, but it's eaten right through it. This should be plastic all the way through. Shit. some plastic missing here so I'm going to have to flush out the, the pan this one's still just about all there bad as the other one. The other one was the worst. The right hand side, passenger side. Now pull these chains off. There we go. It's one timing chain. worn down too. While waiting on the parts for the car I thought I'd give the head headlights a little polish. They come up pretty good. I just buffed them, I didn't sand them. Just took all that yellow out of them. But anyway, um, the parts arrived. So here's the kit, and this kit does the Windsor and the Romeo engines, so I don't need these pieces here. I only need the ones with the metal brackets. But everything's here, timing chains, tensioners, so I can start putting this car back together. As you can see, that water pump looks brand new too. 
I have I had found receipts in the car. He did he did maintain it, oil changes and stuff like that. Got a little stack of receipts. But apparently it sat at Brake Masters for about a year before they finally called to get rid of it. But the car started right up when I put a battery to it. The battery was completely dead. I've been charging it for, well when I got the car I charged it for two or three days and the battery completely came back to life. And it's still under warranty and I've got the receipt for it too so if it does die. It's got a three year warranty and it's a 21. So now, I'm, like I say guys, I've never done one of these before so now I've got to get some light in there so I can see what I'm doing and line up the crank. Um, the crank has a see it has a notch in it right there and you gotta put the chain the timing chains on that and then line them up with the um, the dots or the notches on the top of the cam cam pulleys so I'll start putting this car back together I'm not going to film all of it. I'm, I'm kind of hurting guys, so it's kind of awkward filming and working on this. Because um, my leg is really killing me. But I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. So hopefully, figure out if something can be done. Because I can't carry on like this. Because right now, even standing here filming this, I'm in, I'm in pain. Some serious pain. So I'll start putting this back together and I'll show you as I progress a little bit, bit by bit. I'm not going to film the whole lot because I don't even have enough um, memory on my card right now. So I've got the new chains on. I had to take the valve covers off because I've got to glue the gaskets back on there and they're a pain in the ass to get off too guys. I watched a guy doing them on a Mustang, there was a lot more room. That freaking brake booster's in my way, I can't tip it up, I had to take a whole bunch of shit off and I had to take that purge valve off too, on this side. So I had to disconnect all that, take the cowl ducting off, just to get that valve cover out. Because there's no way I can get that valve cover back on there, the way, the way you've got to wrangle it without gluing the gaskets on there. So I haven't put the tensioners in yet, I've just got the chains on and the guides. So here's the, the new guides. And these ones here and this one. So now I've got to put the tensioners in. They have the tensioners installed. And I'm just going to double check again. Black link on the dot black link on that dot and same here underneath put that there and look under here see the mark black link and the black link behind that as well so the, the timing's right I haven't pulled the pins yet so I'm going to pull the pins right now that's one and that's two pins are pulled and that one didn't pop what's going on there that plunger didn't come out Let's see if I can put the pin back in something wrong with this tensioner I've got to pull that tensioner off, it didn't pop. Uh, we've got a major problem here. So I've got, got the front all put back together, you know, I've got the, the chains and everything on there, the guides, the tensioners. And I cranked it and I kept dropping four rockers. And I thought, okay, you know, the oil pressure's low, you know, I need to pump up the lifters and so I cranked it and cranked it I put the rockers back on 
And what I found was, this was one of the problems. The lifters had collapsed. But see, this one's still soft. They should be rock hard, like this one. No, this one's soft too, but anyway, I pulled all the lifters out and you, you can pick, there's a little crimp ring on, you can pick that off and pull them apart. They were full of crud. So I cleaned the, the lifters out, put them back in, and um, you know, crank the car over again. I've got the fuel pump disconnected so it won't fire. I just want to build up oil pressure. And as soon as I start cranking it, the oil pressure light goes out. Beforehand, it was flickering like I was on low oil pressure because I know that it had popped the cups out of the tensioners and it was just puking all the oil out of there. Well, here's one of the reasons you should keep up the maintenance of your car. Um, I'm going to post, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll still post the videos I took of doing this. I didn't do a whole lot of videoing because, you know, you guys know I'm, I'm hurting with my leg and my back. But here's what happened. He ran it with low oil pressure up top. And let me grab a light. And give it a better view of what's going on. Basically, this engine's done. I don't know what to do with the car yet. We're to yank the engine out. Um, at the minimum, I'm looking at putting another head on. But here's what's happened, guys. He ran it out of oil, ran it dry. And he just ate up the cam journals. Um... He just completely ate this thing up. Yeah, that's one of them. That's not even the worst one. The worst one is up here. Look at that. Completely destroyed. The cam's gone. The cam could probably be saved with an emery cloth because it's it's steel. The steel, you know, the aluminum's going to melt before the steel does. But, yeah, it's pretty bad. So, this car's done. For now, I, I'm still on the fence about what to do with it. Go and pull a head out of a junkyard. But the thing is, it's still not getting oil up there. So obviously, these lifters were full of crap. They'd completely collapsed. And there's a little ball bearing in there that's like a one-way valve. They'd completely collapsed and were full of junk. And they weren't pumping up, so... Um, this thing was really low on oil pressure and it, the, you know, all the oil galleries are obviously full of, um, crap. So even if I put another head on it, I'm going to have to pull the engine out, uh, pull the oil pump out, cause the oil pump might be gone as well. And I'm going to have to clean out all the oil galleries. Because it's not getting oil up top. This this oil you see here is because I um, I lubed up the um, the cam and everything when I was putting it back together. Because I saw it was kind of dry, so I wanted to put some lube on it. Because what I thought at first was it keep dropping sill on the two and sill on the four, and I thought you know this vehicle had been sitting for a year. And when I fired it up, I thought okay maybe the fuel was bad, and I, you know, had stuck valves. They were sticky, st sticking open, because the um, the rockers were just loose in there. But as soon as the cam lobe went in there, obviously it did pull the push the valves in. But when it came back, they were so loose that would they would just keep falling off. The same two, these two here, and the number four. I'm not sure which how these things fire, but still on the two and still on the four at the back. Just keep dropping the rockers off. And so, so I pulled these lifters out and got them back up because they were completely collapsed as well. These, this inner was completely down. So I thought, okay, that's what the problem was. The lifters have collapsed and uh, you can kind of rebuild them. You just got to crimp that ring back on there. So here I, I got a piece of wood wedged in there with a, uh, on a wire so I can pull it out. So I don't have to um, mess around this timing just now because I, I wasn't sure what was going on 
I just wanted to uh, block the timing off so the chain so it doesn't drop and the tensioner doesn't pop out. I just wanted to pull this cam out and see what was going on. Because what I, wa I thought was what I was going to be doing was tapping the valves down because I thought they were stuck. And when I pulled it off and I saw, I mean, this is some heavy metal in here. Look at that. That's just from, that's from the uh, upper half. Um, it's just welded itself to the head. So obviously the cam was working its way out. And that's why there's more and more play between the, the rocker. Well, they, they call these followers, but yeah, generally we just call them rockers. So it was just too much gap. And it just, like I say, the cam was slowly working its way up. And this was just building up so the cam keep coming up and up. And that's why there's such a gap. So here's a, you know, a maintenance thing. If your timing gears are starting to, you know, the tensioners are starting to go, replace them. Don't keep driving it until it's completely eaten up and all the metal, obviously that's what's happened. He ate right through the plastic into the metal and all the metal's gone into the system and it's just plugged everything up. So the other side's okay. It's just this side. Um, let me go around here. The side is still the side is okay. They're all they're all tight. See they're all tight. But um because even when I started undoing the the bolts for the um those I think they're called cradles. Uh, the, the, this thing here. I think, that all the all the bolts were loose and I thought, oh, what's going on? So obviously they'd expanded and then when it cooled off they retracted again and so then the bolts come loose there was only one tight one and the rest that I could basically all undo with my fingers so I need a I need a head at least a head and an oil pump and then I've got to somehow you know like I say guys I haven't decided what to do with this thing yet I don't have a whole lot of money in it you know I could probably sell it for parts or just as a junker more than what I paid for the car but I've got 80 something bucks into it now for the timing timing set. But yeah, so this has come to a halt. This head is shot. There was a guy parting one out up in Phoenix, but he already sold the heads. He wanted 50 bucks for a set of heads. Oh shit, get on, get on to him and shoot up and grab the heads. But he already sold them. He was parting out a P71 police car. So, I don't know guys, what would you do? Repair it or junk it? I, um, you know, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. It's, it's kind of a pain. Because as soon as I, you know, I put the the um, battery in it and it fired right up but then it started missing and farting and I left the rocker covers off because I wanted to see it to make sure oil was coming up but there was nothing coming up so I thought okay maybe it's just you know starvation so I, I pulled the lifter out and I filled the galley all these up with oil but nothing's happening so there's either the oil pump has gone on it or it's blocked, it's blocked up with all the crap that it, he ran through the system. Just, he, he must have just kept on driving and driving and driving. I've already thrown the, um, the guides into the trash can. They're already gone. I'll, sh I'll show you. I could show you again what I mean, but yeah. Yeah, this one, I mean, it's, it's got some scoring. Out. This is the front one. It's not bad. So obviously the cam was lifting up at the back you know the the last area to get oil so the cam was kind of lifting itself out work walking its way out and that's why the the back cylinders keep dropping those rockers but like i say guys let me know what you think um you know i'd kind of stopped recording because i i 
I knew something wasn't right with this um, this thing, the oiling. And then for, for about two days, I was trying to figure out what's going on. You know, for a, for a day, I was messing around with these lifters. And then I also got a pry bar in here and I was rocking the um, valves up and down to see if they were sticking. And then I also, it's up here, put a camera down, I put a scope camera in there and I've got a little fitting on the end so I can look upwards. And the valves looked like they were all shut. Because I thought maybe, the other thing I thought was maybe he slipped the gear because that, that chain was loose. Maybe he slipped the gear and he smacked a couple of valves. And that's why the valves, because I thought the valves were sitting down. And that's why there was no tension on there, that they were loose, that the valves weren't coming back up. But that wasn't the thing, because the spark plugs are still out. I put the camera down there, and the valves look good. So that's when I thought, okay, something's going on. Like I say, I brought the lifters back up, because these are all solid now. They're nice and solid, because they were completely collapsed. There was no oil in them. Now they're back up. These two are a little soft, but they they could be soft because I still haven't um, oiled them and pumped them up, but those are all good. But that's when I thought, no, nah, something is going on. So, And I've seen that they sell wedges you can jam down here. Well, you know, I live out in the country, out in the middle of nowhere. Well, what am I going to do? So I just cut a triangular block of wood wrapped the wire around it and just stuck it in the in between the 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 chain the two chains you know with the one chain but you know what i mean it's there's a block of wood wedged in there between them to stop the uh tensioner from popping and that way i can get the um the gear back on the, the cam but that ain't going to happen now Heard some noise, it's the dogs outside. But, um, so what do you guys think? What should I do? Repair it? Or just send it down the road? Just junk it? You know, I could probably still get... Well, Dan reckons you can still get about 700 bucks for it. As long as it's got cats on it. So... Let me know guys, and thanks again, I see you, I picked up some more subscribers, I really appreciate it guys, um, this thing has got me down a little bit, it's kind of depressed me a little, I've been working on it for about three or four days, <sighs> I was hoping to have this thing run and drive it around for a little while before I did something with it, you know, give it away or whatever. More people seem to like the Series 1 than this thing. You know, this is just a, really, it's just a run-of-the-mill used car now. There's nothing collectible about it. Maybe in 20, 20 or 30 years, it might be slightly more collectible, but... Um, I've had more people react to the Series 1, the old town car. I've actually got, I got the photos from Pete. Pete's about, you know, I mentioned Pete, he's about 83, 84 now. And he used to own a repair shop in town. He's old, old school. He, um, he had the repair shop in town before there was even dealerships or anything in this little town when it started. And he's got photos of that Series 1 that's outside. And he gave them to me uh, on Friday. Uh, yeah, it was a nice looking car, all dark blue, dark blue roof, and it was sold, uh, it's weird because it's got the dealer tags on it, where it came from, but the car was new in Mexico, I don't know if they did like a dealer trade, but the car came from Tucson, so yeah, because I saw the, um, the, the original photos, I saw the license plate frames on it, Sel Selby. S-E-L-B-Y, and they were a, a big um, Lincoln Mercury dealer in uh, Tucson back in the day. He, uh, he's passed away now. I think his name was Howard. Howard or Harold Selby. He's passed. He passed away about 20 years ago. Just 
just ran out of memory in my card, and this one's only got a minute and a half. So anyway, I'm going to sign off, and that's the end of this car for a while. Let me know, guys. Keep it, fix it, junk it. Tell me what you think. But I am going to um, going to roll it out of here and get the uh, Series 1 in here so I can get that running. Because Pete said there was nothing wrong with that car. It's a running driving car. But anyway, I'm signing off because the car's just about ready to go. Good night, guys.